Good afternoon and welcome to Windy Hill Kennel. Today is the 23rd and it's a really pretty day out here today. We decided to bring the kids out and uh, let them get some exercise. <coughs> Excuse me, of course now I'm going to cough. So I gave them a rope just to see what they would do for fun. So it looks like, looks like they're going to have a all out some type of a game of tug of war, which I was hoping they would do, but you know, they don't always do what you think they're gonna do. So while these guys are tugging and pulling, I'm gonna give you their weights. Um, I can't believe how heavy they're getting. So these guys, uh, the 5600 is the male, has the neon green collar on. And it weighs 13 point, <coughs> excuse me, 13 pounds, three ounces. Uh, 5,600 male is the, okay, 5,600 male is the neon green, I'm sorry, weighs 12 pounds, five ounces. 5,603 is the light blue collar, and he is 13 pounds, three ounces. The 5605 is a male with a yellow collar. He's the chocolate, and he weighs 10 pounds, 11.5. 5602 is the female out here. She's the light pink collar. Chocolate Merle weighs 9 pounds, 9.5. That's the big guy up there that just came up to us. And last but not least is 5604. He has the neon orange collar, chocolate Merle male, at 10 pounds, 5.6. So if they stand up on this fence, this fence is 24 inches tall, and I know the big one with the blue collar, he can stand up and stick his nose in the top of his, pretty much stick his face over the top. He's that tall. Um, they're doing really, really good. They go to the vet on Tuesday to be spayed and neutered, and then they're ready to rock and roll and go home. Um, I know several of you I have not heard anything from for pickup. So when you see the video, please call me and let me know your schedule uh, so I can plan my schedule around what's going on as far as pickups. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, these guys have been getting a weekly bath, their toenails trimmed. Of course, everybody's outside playing today and they're all barking out in the kennel. Um, and they're doing, they're just doing fabulous. Whoop, there goes the rope. I have a ton of parachute cord that I bought years ago, and it is strong enough you can hook it to a truck and pull another truck out of the ditch. They actually use this also for uh, parachutes on bombs, and I think I bought like 20 boxes of it oh, probably 20 years ago, and I think we've still got five boxes left. It's the best rope in the whole world. Uh, so the best thing I can tell you with these guys when you go home, you're really, really going to need to set down rules, boundaries, and limitations. Um, everybody always goes, oh, I know I have to get up with it three or four times a night. Do not do that. It becomes your new schedule. Yes, they might potty in their crate. No, they won't continue it because they do it as a puppy. Because when you take these guys home, and I know it's kind of a broken record that I repeat this all the time, but a lot of people don't know it. But this dog will take a full two weeks before you can say, wow. He's really starting or she's really starting to fit in. Um, you're going to change their whole world, their schedule, their smells, their noises, their routines. You're going to change all that in one swift day of pickup. So they've got to get used to you. They've got to learn your family's schedule, your personalities, your habits, um, your habits that you do with them. All that will change the day they go home. So please be patient. Um, give them that two weeks break in period as I call it. Don't expect a whole lot. Teach them their name. Um, play fun games with them so that they learn that you're a nice person. I would avoid screaming at them. I would avoid um, swatting them the first day or two with a newspaper if you're a person that uses a newspaper. I would avoid all that because there is a period of fear flight factor with a dog. So around here, if I yell no bark, they're used to me. They've, they've been with me this way. They've heard me say it. Maybe not at them, but when they were little, they heard me say it to other dogs in the, in the kennel. And so my voice doesn't scare the bejeebies out of them, even though it's loud and harsh if I'm really going no bark. 
uh, or I smack my hands together, you know, they know me. It takes them a little bit to get used to you. Um, if you scare them too bad when they're little, you will have a dog that's fearful the rest of its life. So for that first up to 12 to 13 weeks, just avoid, you know, scary things, things that will scare the bejeebies out of this dog. When it's asleep, don't go up and go boo, which a lot of kids like to do because they think it's fun to watch the dog jump. He says, oh, this son feels so good. I'm just going to lay down. Oh, he's got a stick. No, he's got a leaf in his mouth. Um, so just be a little mindful of that. Oh, now it's going to get windy. So, ooh, it's going to be loud. Sorry. That wind just came up. Uh, these guys are used to coming out in the yard and spending a good, I don't know, probably four hours uh, on a nice day like this. They're going to be out here for the next four hours this afternoon. Um, it'll give them a chance to interact, to play. And you're going to also need to wear the energy out of these guys. So you're going to need to wear out that spent up energy. So if you're a family that works or you're a family that's still home, if you're outside a lot, that's great. Let the dog go with you. Uh, you do not have to put these on a leash at this age. So if you have a fenced yard, uh, or if you don't have a fenced yard, you can just let the puppy out in the backyard with you. Don't chase it. Um, clicker training is phenomenal. You can teach it when the clicker clicks, it's going to get a treat. And you basically, <laughs> you've got this one wrapped up with the rope, trying to pull it. Um, Clicker training is phenomenal. When a dog goes to run the other direction, that's actually not a puppy out here, that's a stuffed dog of some kind. But um, when they go to run the other direction and you go, oh no, no, and you go to chase them, well, they're scared, first of all, because your voice has gone up, they know there's a fear factor in that voice, and they're gonna run because you're chasing them, and they don't know what you're gonna do to them. The worst thing you can do is catch your dog and knock the bejeebies out of it because you're mad that it didn't do what you wanted it to do. Your dog can absolutely sense everything about your personality through the way you talk to this dog, the way you handle it. Oh, look at this. This is so cute. He's got these big ears are up in the air. He's on his back. He said, oh, this son is so nice. He says, don't bother me. That's the, the big turquoise collar guy. Um, so just be mindful of your voice. Be mindful. If you're having a bad day and you're stressed, don't do something with the dog. Don't try a training thing. Don't. Don't do anything other than have a good time with it. Take it out in the yard, let it run its legs off. I could take this puppy pin down and take them all for a walk. And, you know, we've got about 30 acres, but for me to go down, uh, I'm way away from the road. My road is clear out there. There's actually a road between that house and myself, but we're up on a hill. Um, I could go anywhere out here I wanted, even if they go 20 foot from me and smell something, I just go the other way and kind of raise my voice and say, do the baby talk thing and say, come on, let's go. Oh, yep, yeah, turned around and looked at me. <laughs> so your voice is either welcoming or it's a fearful thing for them. So just kind of a heads up on that. Um, if you are going to do your own grooming, you've got to start from week one. Get it used to you gave me a bath use an all-natural shampoo that is tearless and has no detergent or sodium in it. If you have not ever used um, puppy tears, we use it exclusively here in the kennel and I have always given it out and until this year, but because of this stupid COVID thing, I cannot get it in. So the best I can tell you is Amazon Prime does sell it. It's just called puppy tears shampoo. It's 55% concentrated and you can actually just put a little bit of it in some type of a bottle with a, a lid on it put some water in it and dilute it down because it's so thick it's like jelly but it is tearless you can scrub their face you can wash them three times a week if you want to it does not dry their skin out um, you might want to keep them used to a hair dryer so in the winter time when you bathe them you don't want to have to dry all that hair out, but I have a feeling when they're older, unless you're really into grooming, you'll probably take them and have them groomed uh, because they're going to be big dogs with a lot of hair and it takes some time to get them dry. Uh, when you come to pick up, for those of you that are picking up or if you're getting uh, picked up by a nanny and brought to you, either way, you are going to get uh, everything your nanny, uh, you would get here, your nanny will bring to you. So she'll bring your whole puppy packet. She'll bring your extra dog food. Um, so 
um, videos have already gone out. If you did not get your puppy videos, which is a uh, consist of about seven or eight videos that we do for everybody, please let me know and I'll resend that out for you. Oh, they're looking for a drink of water. Vanessa set it out here. He says, I really need a drink. Okay, I gotta go get a drink. I'm sorry, I'm gonna walk. I wish I could stop this and then continue, but I can't. All right. Oh, I know you're gonna. No, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pull that back and I'm gonna set the over top of the water. There we go. Normally, somebody gets in it, knocks it over, but I know they're thirsty. So, at least one of them was. Now they want to play with me. Go away. <laughs> um, if you're going to do treats with your dog, I would look for things that are all natural. Stay away from those leather rawhide chews. Those are not safe. They actually can swallow it and get it in their belly and they can't digest it. And if it's a big one, it has to be taken out of their belly. Uh, the other thing is rawhides are treated with all kind of junk. And so anything that looks like an artificial bone, uh, those dentist, dentist sticks, which are rawhide, don't buy that junk. Um, go to the butcher, buy some raw bones, and uh, you'll be much, much happier. They'll chew for hours. These guys have had raw bones. They've also had hamburger, raw hamburger. Um, I have our butcher mix my hamburger, 50% fat, 50% hamburger. And then we freeze it. In fact, I just bought 40 pounds today. We freeze it in the freezer in uh, muffin cups, like those mini muffin cups. And these get, then I give it to them frozen. And uh, they have it like for a, a puppy popsicle treat. They'll, and they eat it really, really well. They love it, in fact. It's really good for their coat and their skin. Also, um, I have plenty of dog food here. If you are interested in a bag when you come, so they have the same things they're eating now. Um, our dog food is $39 a bag. We use High Standard. I also carry Joy, which Joy is made by High Standard. You can buy Joy from Chewy, but you can't buy High Standard from Chewy. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you do want to continue feeding them what they've been on, I'll be glad to uh, have well we always carry extra dog food here so don't worry about it but anyway um, other than that please give me a call uh, and let me know if you're going to be picking up in person if you were going to pay with PayPal we are now accepting Zelle and Zelle is just my phone number there is no fee for Zelle there is a 4% fee for PayPal so if you're going to send a final payment in on PayPal you've got to remember to add 4% to whatever you're paying with PayPal. But if you do it with Zelle, there is no fee. Uh, and it goes directly from your bank to mine. Uh, and it's actually under my phone number if that's what you wanna do is do it with Zelle. Or if you're coming in person, you're more than welcome to bring a cashier's check. Um, that would be awesome. It's entirely whatever you wanna do. So have a good week. Um, let me know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you later. Have a good week.